Welcome back. Well, our next guest truly has the American dream success story. After more than 32 years working at some of the world's top companies, ranging from Kodak to Pfizer to the former executive vice president of PepsiCo, Tim Koss decided to return to his alma mater in 2013 to head up the institution from once he which hailed. So please welcome to the show, former JU graduate, now president of Jacksonville University, Tim Koss. It's so good to see you. Great, Casey. Thanks, thanks for being here. Great to be here. Appreciate the time because I know you're a very busy man, sure. but we wanted to have you swing by, talk a little bit about your story. First of all, Think back to when you were in school. We won't date when it was, but when you're walking across the campus, did you ever think that someday you'd be back running the joint? Oh my gosh, no. I was fortunate in my day. I was there from 77 to 81. I'll cop to my age. Uh, and the president was Fran Kinney, Dr. Francis Bartlett Kinney, amazing, who's still with us, age 100. In those days, you know, I was just trying to learn my craft, interested in business and finance and playing some ball. I was fortunate to be able to come down here, but no, I, I thought I'd spend my entire career in business, and as you mentioned, I spent a good portion of it. You it's nice did to be there spend now. a lot of time. You look at your resume; it's very impressive. Bristol Myers Squibb, Kodak, Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson, PepsiCo. So, what would you attribute for people who are watching your story of success? Uh, you just kept building up to being the executive vice president of PepsiCo. What right. can people take away, and what do you attribute your success to? Oh wow, well, yeah. I mean, when you're in it, you never think about are you being successful. We talk at Jacksonville University about creating students who are smart, creative, and fearless. Uh, and we're really honored for the young people who come in. We'll talk about that. But I think in that time, I was learning as I went from good company to good company, industry to industry, that leadership mattered. People wanted, we didn't know the term servant leader. I just knew if the people under me or worked on either side of me were successful, then I was doing my job. So we worked on things like perseverance and optimism and respect for others and teamwork. And while that sounds like Boy Scout stuff today, I'll tell you it works. Work ethic, character, put the time in, keep learning. I always think you should get additional education, which I went on and did. But it, it translated from one place to the other. Yeah, went on to Harvard and did, did a lot there as well. Is it empowerment of the employees who worked for you? Did you feel that that really made a difference in, in being able to promote you amongst the ranks? Oh, that's exactly right. So the idea was you'd kind of hold, you're, you're responsible for so many careers once you get higher up in these organizations. I spent the first decade or two not high up. As like any young person, coming out of JU, I got an incredible degree. The school prepared me very well, as I think we do today. And I went on into these great corporations, and it was how do you enable the people mm -hmm. around? I mean, if you're going for the credit yourself, I mean, eventually it will be taken from you. We were constantly, my wife Stephanie and I built two careers around how do you constantly make others around you? I mean, we're not in it for charity. We wanted to do well. But we saw as team players, we were both team athletes. If you bring that feeling into the business world, it works. That's a, that's a very powerful thing. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about JU. You could be doing just about anything with the executive VP of PepsiCo. You could go on and be running other companies if you so chose. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity to come to JU came about, All and right. you decided to come back. Talk about why you decided to do that and what where you hope this university will go. Sure. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, this community has been incredibly supportive of what we're trying to do at the school. We've been there since uh, 1930. 34 and uh, you know we've graduated over 30,000 grads who've gone on to do incredible things but the goal was when they invited us back we decided is there something you can do to serve we had a very very good run very fortunate through the corporate career and I think we honed some skills that maybe could help others do well too so the game plan was if we can come back and serve can we start to pull apart the parts that make the university distinct we thought we're in great weather, we're near the water, we're in a business town, we're in a military town, we're in a healthcare town. And could we start to build those things into a strategy that would make Jacksonville University a premier regional university that can take you everywhere across 70 different types of things to study. So that was really the game plan and what's turned out to happen is really bright young kid. I mean the incoming class that's coming in yesterday 1,258 young people just came and joined the university yesterday. And for a school that when I went to it didn't even have 2,000 students, to see it <laughs> wow. have that kind of growth from the number of countries and the number of states, it's gratifying. Well, and I just have, happen to have that statistic. 40 U.S. states represented across the country go to, to right. JU, and 20 countries right. across the globe are now students over at the university. Let's talk very quickly. We don't have much time left about Division One athletics. That's another huh. cool part of JU is that you're a Division One athlete. And i got to plug you real quick because I don't want to 
to get your statistic wrong. You were a baseball player back at JU. And by the way, one of the top 10 winningest pitchers in baseball history. As a freshman in your first NCAA, you pitched the only nine inning no, his, no hitter. So you, you know what it takes. And you said you've taken that sports sure. knowledge and that competitive spirit and working with teams. And you've translated that into your corporate career. So do you see JU, and you've got a lot of great athletes because I've met some parents who are sending their kids there. Mm -hmm. So do you see that as part of the package then to bring these kids and, and raise them into the future? Sure. So of the 4,000 students, we have 500 or Division I athletes. Being a Division I school is important to us. The, the, the ideals that you learn, the discipline on the field. I was a team athlete. Both uh, Stephanie's and my two children both played Division I athletics. My son went on to be a professional athlete. But back to JU, the, the student athletes who come there become the student leaders. I mean, it is not an Ohio State or a Penn State. Those, those 500 athletes moving among their classmates, they set the tone. When you have military leaders on campus, as we do, and athlete leaders on campus, it has a great deal to do with the culture we're able to build. We're really proud to have them. President Cost, thank you, sir. Pleasure, Appreciate Casey. you taking Thanks the time to get back to work. I said yeah. you can stay out here as long as you want, watch a little sports center in the green room, but I know you Pleasure. Thanks. Great, great show. Better things. Thanks so much.